What's so great about Kokanee? They are the little salmon that could. Jordan, get him, bud! Oh, yeah. He's really colored up. What a Kokanee lacks up in size, it makes up in everything else. Its taste, its tenacity, how hard they like to fight, how readily accessible they really are to people, and they're awesome to take out the kids and family and provide a good fishing experience. Nothing to warm you up like a couple of nice Kokanee takedowns on a Cannon Downrigger. What a lot of people don't realize is that a true Kokanee is a sockeye salmon that is just landlocked. So these are a salmon that don't get to go out to the ocean, get all the food, get all the nutrients to come back and be really big salmon. They will just treat a lake just like the ocean if they can't get out. But then when they get to a certain size and there's not enough food to support them growing any bigger, they'll become sexually mature and swim up the creeks in the small rivers and spawn just like every other salmon does, create babies. The babies will then flow out to the lake and they'll keep going like that. So when we're fishing them in the spring, the fish are very silvery, they're chrome, they're beautiful, they're a little smaller, but as they progress, they grow a little larger through the summer, and when they get to that natural instinct like, okay, it's fall time, I need to go spawn, what they'll do is they'll congregate towards the little creeks and river mouths of the lake or the reservoir, and they start to pair up and spawn just like salmon. And some of the pairing and some of the spawning that they do get real competitive because the real choice clean gravel and clean pools get very sought after. So when you go and you check out some of these creeks and some of these streams, sometimes you can go and see thousands and thousands of these little red bodied green head kokanee all fighting for their time in the gravel. Unfortunately, just like all our Pacific salmon, uh, when they spawn, it's the end of the road for them. They basically will sit on their reds and fight until they have no more energy, and then they'll die. But also when they die, in the death of that salmon, they're also providing nutrients to the creeks and the rivers. Um, the bugs and the plants and everything benefit from those kokanee dying in the streams. And then in the spring, when the fry hatch and they come out into these natal streams and creeks, Hopefully those salmon that have died provided a lot of bugs, a lot of forage for them. They're gonna migrate down to the lakes and then they're gonna continue the cycle all over again. Kokanee are kind of unique as they have a really soft mouth as they bite and they fight real hard and aggressively. So we pair these soft rods with our cannon downriggers to put the gear right at where the fish are going to be and hopefully catch a bunch. Kokanee, I'd say, is probably the most finesse style of downrigger fishing, but probably even more necessary. Fishing with the downrigger is something that growing up in the Northwest, I didn't see, you know, we don't have those fisheries like you do in the Great Lakes where you're fishing these large bodies of water, but being able to adapt it to these reservoirs and these lakes and even a small one, even if you need to go 20 feet down, it's still sometimes more effective than having a, a piece of lead on there. Utilizing the downrigger to get down to the depth, our landing ratio is considerably better because we don't have all that lead and stuff attached to it. Putting a limit on the deck by 10 a.m., it quickly showed how effective getting your stuff down and holding it in that, in that particular zone was. With the amount of people out there that really have gravitated towards kokanee fishing, I can fish 200 days full seasons of just kokanee guiding because I think the demand is that much. Utilizing downriggers, I can now fish year round and experience the full potential of the season. It sets you apart from any competition on the lake. 